Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and juicy and viewers, in the beginning, a God the origin existed in the original space in the form of the light that contained the voice. At a certain time, God the origin cohered as the light at the vertex of the spiritual realm to begin the human cultivation. At the same time, the original space was divided into four spaces that have different density of spirit and different brightness of the light. This is how the first, second, third, and fourth heavens were created. The light that cohered at the vertex of the spiritual realm was divided into three different lights, and each put on a spiritual form that is like that of man. That is, God the origin became God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Beginning with this lecture, I will explain the works of the creation after God the origin became God the Trinity. God the Trinity created what is necessary first in the place where He stays. When God existed in the original space as the light that contained the voice, He didn't need a separate place to stay in. He existed as the light and the voice, and thus He didn't need a place to stay in. However, He now needed a place to stay since He put on a form. God the Trinity, of course, can either put on the form or not when He is in the fourth heaven. God can change His form as freely as He pleases in His heart. It's possible because the attribute of the fourth heaven is the same as the original space. However, God the Trinity puts on a form in the third heaven where the heavenly kingdom is located. And there are separate places for God the Trinity to stay in in the third heaven. Of course, there is a place for God the Trinity in the fourth heaven as well. It's the place that is necessary only when God the Trinity puts on a form. Along with this place, God the Trinity created spiritual beings that He would oversee. There are two kinds of spiritual beings that God oversees. They are angels and cherubim. God created angels and cherubim with His Word. I'm going to explain about these angels and cherubim over the next few lectures. An angel is almost the same in its form as that of a man, except that it has wings. There are various shapes of cherubim. The spiritual beings that have the appearances of the forms, such as lions, eagles, and cows, are all cherubim. Dragons are generally considered imaginary creatures, but they were originally a kind of cherubim. I'll come back to cherubim later, but for now, I'm going to tell you about angels. Let's take a look at general characteristics of angels first. Since the shape of angels is almost the same as that of man, some parts of the Bible described angels as men. For example, when the Lord resurrected, the women who went to the tomb saw an angel. For this, Mark 16 verse 5 says that they saw a young man sitting at the right wearing a white robe. A young man sitting at the right wearing a white robe. For this same sin, however, John 20 verse 20 describes it as two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. When the Lord ascended into heaven, two angels appeared to his disciples who were gazing into the sky. But for this, Acts chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 says, the two men in white clothing told them that the Lord would come back. From the fact that the people of the Bible who witnessed angels described them as men, we can see that the shape of angels is similar to that of men. With their wings spread, we can see they are angels. But if, they, if their wings are folded, we cannot see whether they are men or angels. So when they spread their wings, you know, we can clearly see they are angels, you know, when they spread their wings like this. Just as man was created in the 
image of God, angels were also created in the image of God. Of course, angels were created before men. However, there is a clear difference between men and angels. Angels only resemble the outward image of God, but man was created to resemble even his heart. Now, since the shape of an angel is similar to that of a man, is the size and height also similar to each other? Some are similar to men, however, there are very tiny angels and huge angels as well. And there are male angels and female angels too. However, it does not mean that angels have physiological features of a man or a woman. Angels do not need to marry or to breed just as men do. They just follow the orders of God and do their roles. However, according to their roles, they may have the form and characteristics that are masculine or feminine. For example, if there is an angel who plays the role of an army general, which form would be more appropriate, a male or female? Of course, it is a male shape. What about dancing and singing? A female form might be more suitable. Well, I don't mean that there are no masculine appearing angels that dance. Just that there are you know, male dancers in this world and they play their roles, there are male-like angels as well. Brothers and sisters, when God created angels and cherubim, He didn't give them the humanity that He gave to men. God didn't give the humanity to angels and the cherubim. He created them so that they would only obey orders according to their hierarchy. However, angels can also fill the heart of God whom they are serving. Let me make an example of animals. Man raises animals such as cows, horses, pigs, chickens, and dogs. Among these animals, for example, can chickens feel the heart of their owner? They can't. However, dogs are exceptions. If dogs stay with their owner over a long period of time, they can feel the heart of their owner a little bit. If an owner gets angry, his dog can feel it, puts his tail between legs, and tries to read the owner's face. On the other hand, if the owner rejoices, his dog also wags its tail and they rejoice together. Likewise, angels can also show various facial expressions and attitudes according to a given mood. If their master sings praises and dances with joy, the angel also follows the master in happiness. If the master laughs at something funny, the angel also laughs following the master. If the master becomes sad, the angel also looks sad and sits down helplessly. According to the status of master's mind, the look and attitude of an angel also changes. The characteristics of angels also vary according to their given duties. For example, the angels that sing or dance usually laugh with ease. Some angels are playful and they are good at making funny faces. On the other hand, the angels that play the role of a security guard do not laugh. In the same way, there are angels that are given a unique duty in the spiritual realm. But there are other angels that minister the children of God on earth. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits? All angels are ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. You know, those who accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and whose names are written in the Book of Life. They are sent to render service. Each one of you are assigned an angel to render service to help you manage a Christian life and to protect you from the enemy devil and Satan. If you live in the Word of God, if you live by the Word of God, angels will protect you and you can avoid any disasters and diseases. But they cannot protect you if you don't live by the Word of God according to justice. 
It's the law of God, and they cannot protect you. So you get sick and encounter disasters. Are they not sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? So if you are not saved, and your name is not written in the book of life, God does not send you an angel. You cannot be protected. As recorded, a child of God is assigned at least one angel that ministers that child. If you believe this fact, what should you do? If you doze off during a worship service, you should know how much your angel tries to wake you up. The angel says, Master, you shouldn't doze off. It's rude before God and desperately try to wake you up. However, the voice of angel is spiritual, so you cannot audibly hear it. You cannot hear it unless you are awake. If you are awake, fervently praying and receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you get the feeling in your heart. Even if you don't clearly hear it, you know, I shouldn't doze off. It's rude before God the Father. You will think like this and you will not fall asleep because you, know, you feel so sorry and embarrassed before God. But those who fall asleep constantly fall asleep. Even though they are told to worship God in spirit and truth, they fall asleep. Why don't they hear the voice of angels? Isn't it because they love the world? Without casting off the untruth? Isn't it because they befriend the world and love the world? It's because you are spiritually asleep, not fleshly. In other words, you have too much untruth in your heart. You love the world instead of casting off from it. So, when you listen to the word during the worship service, you cannot understand it due to your fleshly thoughts. Moreover, if you have idle thoughts, you cannot concentrate but easily fall asleep. When you were a student and your teacher was giving a lecture and you had idle thoughts, then you're wasting that time. You couldn't remember what was told by the teacher because you were in the idle thoughts. But if you had no idle thoughts and concentrate on the lecture of the teacher, you could remember it very well. It's the same. It's the same with the Word of God. If you have idle thoughts, you cannot concentrate and you fall asleep. It's like the enemy devil and Satan singing a lullaby. So in this case, no matter how desperately your angel tries to awaken you, you cannot hear its voice. On the other hand, to the extent you fill your heart with the truth, you can hear the voice of the Spirit well. Even if you cannot see your angel with spiritual eyes, you can sense the angel must be feeling like this now. Even if you cannot feel it, since you know it now, please try to do what your angel desires for you. Then God will love what you do too. If you gossip and speak ill of someone, your angel will stay away from you. The Bible tells you not to gossip. Don't judge and don't condemn. Those who are good at judging and condemning, they judge and condemn others as if they were able to read the mind of others. I wonder, I wonder when they can get rid of it and come into spirit. Unless they cast it off, they are far from the spirit. They are far from spirit. Angels hate those who gossip. They hate people who gossip others. And angels stay away from them since it is against the justice. Well, your angel will say first, you shouldn't do this or that. 
However, if you don't listen to it, but continue to do it, the angel will stand farther from you and eventually turn its back to you. Well, about uh, 10 to 20 meters away and turn its back to you. If your angel ignores you like this, the enemy devil and Satan will never lose its opportunity. Since angels don't protect you, the enemy devil and Satan don't lose the chance. They will incite and instigate you to speak more words of untruth. On the contrary, if you live by the word of God, your angel will be so much pleased and it will stay close beside you, keep you, and protect you. If you are protected by an angel, you are blessed. Depending on how far you come into spirit, and how strong your faith is, the capability and strength of the angel changes. Stronger angels will protect you. Even if you encounter a dangerous accident or situation, your angel can keep you safe. There are many mommy members who were not injured at all, even though their cars were wrecked in car accidents. Some of them were thrown out of the moving car through its window and fell down to the ground, but they were okay. And they said they felt someone was holding them up and supported comfortably. If you live in the light by the word of God, you can be protected by angels in any situations. It's an ordinary thing to me because it happened all the time to me. The people and workers around me experience it you know, so many times. In addition, angels are recording your every word and action in heaven. There are angels that record what you think in your heart and the words you speak. That's why every word you speak on earth will never fall down to the ground and you will be given account for it on the judgment day. So if you can remember this, you will not speak carelessly. If you speak carelessly and recklessly, you should know you will be judged for what you say. You should know. The Bible is absolute. I'm so scared. Well, then you should live an honest life and a sanctified life and cast off evil, right? If you repent of what you speak, you can be forgiven. But the problem is, you don't remember what you spoke. That's why many people cannot destroy the wall of sin, even if they have the wall. The Bible says, the word that you speak may have the authority to save others or kill others, and you'll be judged for that. You can remember what you did in action, but you cannot easily remember what you spoke, and thus you cannot repent as, it, as time goes by. And then the wall of sin remains. So if you speak an evil word, you should repent of it right away. Ah, I spoke a word of untruth and evil. I judged someone or condemned someone. You should realize it and repent of it quickly. And the record will be submitted as the evidence of judgment during the great white throne judgment. I'm not saying you will not be saved because of this. Unless you commit a sin that leads you to death, the Bible explains under what condition you cannot be saved. Those who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and stand against the Holy Spirit and willfully commit sin, put the Lord on the cross again, and lose the first love of God and have a lukewarm faith. The Bible says they are to be thrown away. If you don't repent of this and don't turn back from it, you will be thrown away. But the word that you speak recklessly will be judged. You will be judged at the judgment of rewards, and your rewards will be reduced. 
because of that. In Matthew 18, verse 10, Jesus said, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Do not despise any little ones. Even the little ones are assigned to by angels. When you despise them, it will be reported before God. For I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Angels give report before God. All will be reported before God. Well, all the angels report to God. If there are seven billions of people, there are seven billions of angels in heaven as well. How can God receive the reports of all these angels? There is an order too. Angels give report to archangels. And archangels put them in the golden censer according to the order. And all the reports are given to God. God does not see each and every angel to receive report from them all the time. No way. There is an order in the spiritual realm like this. and it operates precisely according to the strict order. Therefore, I urge you to live all the more perfectly in the light by believing that an angel is right beside you. In addition, angels are recording your every word and action in heaven. The world of angels is well organized. The minister equivalent in the world of angels is the archangel. The organization of angels that consists of archangels, different levels of leading angels, and angels underneath them are well organized. Angels are the workers of God, and they help the government of God be managed in perfect justice. There are many records about various works of angels in the Bible. When our Jesus was born, a multitude of the heavenly host praised God. In Acts chapter 12 is a scene where an angel saved Peter, who was locked in a prison. Revelation 8 verses 3 and 4 describes a scene. that an angel puts the incense of the prayers of the saints in the golden censer and gives it on the golden altar before the throne of God. In emergency, God sends the heavenly host to protect the people of God. There are many more works than this that angels do. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases such as colds and fever go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. 
Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you.